from the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania. It's your News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. A body found in the apartment of a Hazleton woman who's been missing since Friday afternoon. At this point, investigators not confirming anything, but friends and relatives are distraught. That's our top story on News 13. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kathy Bazinski. A short time ago, coroners removed the body from a building on East Diamond Avenue, and investigators are calling that person's death a homicide. While they won't identify the victim, as Jasmine Brooks reports, it was clear that friends and loved ones there at the time fear the worst. Oh, my God. It was a tragic scene outside of this East Diamond Avenue apartment building. A body taken from the building just hours ago after police executed a search warrant for the apartment. Police are calling it a homicide. This is the same building where a woman who has been missing for the past four days lives. But police are being cautious in releasing the victim's name. I just uh, because of where this investigation is headed, we're being very cautious with the specifics that we release. Maria Bria of 343 East Diamond Avenue was reported missing by her family on Saturday after she failed to pick up her children at school Friday. On Monday, Hazleton police issued an alert for the woman. This morning, city police, state police forensics investigators and a deputy coroner converged on the Diamond Street apartment building. Bria lived on the second floor with her ex-boyfriend, Oscar Lozano Garcia. Police say the pair recently broke up. An autopsy is scheduled for this afternoon at Wilkes-Barre General Hospital. Jasmine Brooks, News 13, Hazleton. And investigators say once the autopsy is complete, they will notify the victim's family and then release the ID. Investigators now calling the deaths of 41-year-old Stacy Walton and 51-year-old John Walton a suspected murder-suicide. Luzerne County coroner says the couple died in their home on Butler Drive, each with a single gunshot wound. The coroner also saying their bodies were discovered by their son and Stacy's father, who went looking for them after they noticed the couple apparently never left for work Monday morning. Investigators say the couple had been in the home together since Sunday afternoon. Friends say that John Walton had filed for a divorce about a week and a half ago. Stacy Walton was an elementary and middle school English as a second language teacher in the Hazleton Area School District. She worked at the Freeland, Drums, Arthur Street and Valley Schools. John Walton was a local paving contractor. The coroner won't rule on who the victim was until forensics tests are completed. Today's students and faculty throughout the Hazleton Area School District continue to grieve the loss of Stacy Walton, a friend, teacher, and co-worker to many. Those who knew her and worked with her are calling Stacy a caring and giving person. Superintendent of the Hazleton Area School District, Dr. Francis Antonelli, says grief counseling continues today. Well, again, we're uh, deeply uh, saddened and, and really devastated by by the recent events uh, in, in involving a, a, a teacher that was very much loved and very well respected by all who knew her in the Hazleton Area School District. Uh, uh, many folks are having a hard time coping with this and we have and continue to have on-site grief counselors not only for staff but for students. Uh, her students absolutely loved her. And the superintendent says grief counselors are available at multiple schools throughout the district. Students as well as teachers taking advantage of their services. School officials in Connecticut are calling it a day to start healing. With heavy hearts and amid high security, children in Newtown return to school today for the first time since a gunman killed 26 students and staff at Sandy Hook Elementary on Friday. Even as schools were reopening, two more children, six-year-olds Jessica Ricos and James Mattioli, were being laid to rest. Wakes also scheduled tonight for Charlotte Bacon and Daniel Barden, and for teacher Victoria Soto, hailed as a hero for shielding her students in a closet. Closet. Meanwhile, the elementary school where they were killed remains a crime scene. District officials have not decided whether it will reopen. Its 600 students will now attend class at a school in a neighboring community. People all over the greater Hazleton area continue to grieve for the victims in Connecticut. To show compassion to the families of Newtown, a car drive is being organized. Not only will the community be involved in the car drive, but students in the greater Hazleton School District are taking part. Our Jasmine Brooks has more on this week's Super Segment.
For this week's Super Segment, I am joined with Superintendent of the Hazel Area School District, Dr. Francis Antonelli, and Tammy Martin, who is not only the mayor of Freeland, but also an employee here at the school district. And we're talking about a card campaign, and it comes just days after the tragedy in Connecticut. The Greater Hazelton Area is reaching out to all the victims' families and the whole community, and really, really making a big, big um, difference really you're going to be doing something very shortly and it's called the card campaign so tell me about that um, after the tragedy that happened in Connecticut and you watch all those newscasts your heart goes out to those people um, anybody who's lost anyone knows it's not now that the people feel alone it's when everybody goes back to their normal lives that they need to know they're supported by other people and I just wanted to do something to show them that we do care. We're with them in their grieving process. Originally, we were just going to do it in the community. That was my intention. But the, you know, I was getting such a great response for it. I had asked Dr. Antonelli and Mr. Basic if I can open it up to the district. Uh, sometimes that's the best way for kids to express themselves is if they put it, maybe draw a little picture or put it in writing. So it's not only going to help the, the people in Connecticut heal, it might help our children understand a little bit more. All right, and Dr. Antonelli, um, you, the whole community will eventually be involved. Can you explain that? Sure, and I'd like to say that the people of the greater Hazleton area are caring and compassionate uh, individuals. Uh, it, it was somewhat uh, uh, surprising that at the time that Tammy came to me with this initiative for our school district, uh, Paula Hahn uh, had contacted me within an hour about her initiative throughout the community. Mm -hmm. So we are very, very proud to be partnering as a school district, having our students involved with this initiative, this CAR campaign, uh, and uh, having folks from the senior living communities and folks from health care, Paula Hahn and John McNeilis. I've uh, been very active uh, in the community and again partnering with Tammy to show a community-wide effort uh, to support uh, the families of the victims and everyone involved uh, in Newton with this uh, horrific tragedy. Okay, and finally I just want to know if anybody in the greater Hazleton area wants to jump on board with this, can they? Absolutely, uh, they can contact me at the uh, school district, 459-3111, uh, extension 3198. All right, thank you so much. Thank you. For this week's Super Segment, I'm Jasmine Brooks from the Hazelton Area School District. And as you can imagine, the tragic Newtown school shooting is affecting safety control all over the country. Luzerne County Community College right here is upping its campus safety. Christina Papa is here now to tell us about the changes happening on campus. Christina? Thanks, Kathy. They have security cameras and officers on campus already, but now security officers on LCCC's campus will be armed in the upcoming year. Campus officials say they want to be as prepared as possible to ensure tragedies like the recent shooting in Connecticut never happen on their campus. They're locked and loaded. Luzerne County Community College's security officers will officially be carrying guns on patrol starting in the new year. We have enhanced the training for our, our security officers, and we are moving towards a policy of adopting uh, our officers to carry weapons. President Tom Leary says this idea isn't something new. The security office has been pushing for the changes for over a year. Leary says recent mass shootings have opened the school's eyes to the importance of campus safety. Uh, with everything that's going on in our, in our society, unfortunately, the, the terrible tragedy and sadness we experienced over the weekend, it makes us more sensitive and cognizant to our responsibility to protect. LCCC is the largest college in northeastern Pennsylvania, and with over 7,000 students, the security team says it's important to keep a watchful eye on all 180 acres of the campus. Now, Mr. Barrett says they have cameras and security officers at each of the campus's sites. He says they do their best to try and keep the entire college community safe. Well, we have a very safe campus. I would like to emphasize that. Uh, we have very few incidents that do occur here at the college, and we attribute that to the uh, safety conscious staff and students that we do have here. Leary says he's pleased with the training and safety changes that are put in place to better protect the students on campus. Students are in any way put in harm's way. 
then we will have trained professionals who can respond to that situation. Now, although LCCC is a weapon-free campus, Barrett told me it's better to be prepared before an incident than to wish you could have done more after the matter. Thank you very much, Christina. Well, a couple from Hazel Township has been charged with growing with intent to deliver marijuana. And it all happened when police were called to their home during a domestic dispute. 47-year-old Mary Cook and 54-year-old Anthony Gentle are both charged with charges related to growing pot with intent to deliver. When troopers arrived at their apartment, Cook's daughter told them about the pot growing in an upstairs bedroom and even brought them two plants. Troopers went to the bedroom and found a closet transformed into a grow room. Both Cook and Gentle were arranged and released on $35,000 bail. Cook also had a PFA against Gentle, and he was also charged with violating it. Still ahead on News 13, Luzerne County passes its operating budget for next year, but not without some controversy. And that brings us to the number nine top story for 2012, budget battles all over our region. That story when News 13 continues. Christmas is one week away, so you have seven more days to shop. Come on out for the 32nd Annual Holiday Outdoor Seafood Extravaganza at Boyer's. Frozen sea scallops, just $7.97 per pound. With just several days left until Christmas, your shopping should stop at Angelique Boutique. Don't forget they now have Elf on the Shelf. They have boys. Now they also have the girls, and don't forget to pick up the nice skirt as well. If you're looking for Elf on the Shelf ornaments, they have those too. And also the DVD for the children in your life. Pick one up today and stop by Angelique Boutique in the Churchill Mall for all of your holiday shopping. This season of joy, our family at All American Auto Group wishes you and your family a Merry Christmas and Happy, Healthy, Safe New Year. Happy, happy Holidays! West Hazleton's newest business nutrition management center hopes you celebrate this beautiful season with love in your home, peace in your world, and joy in your heart. Wishes for a happy holiday season and healthy new year from Nutrition Management Center. When we at the Furniture Connection count our blessings at Christmas time, we think of friends like you. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from your friends at the Furniture Connection. Cunningham's newest cake shop, Sweets by Deliciosa, wishes that the love, hope, and peace of this holiday season abide with you now and throughout the new year. Happy Holidays from Sweets by Deliciosa. Ring in the new year at Genetti's December 31st, starting at 6.30 p.m. We will be hosting a rockin' New Year's Eve party. Located at Genetti's Best Western Route 309 on Hazleton, Featuring a cash bar, dinner buffet, $1 draft, and free hors d'oeuvres happy hour, and live performances by Cartoon and Nemesis. All topped off by a midnight champagne toast sponsored by News 13 SSP TV. It will truly be a once in a year party. That's December 31st at Genetti's. Reserve your seats today. For tickets or more information, you can call 570-501-3700. Here's to good friends, good times, good health, good cheer, and happy holidays throughout the year. Happy holidays from your friends at Tech Transport. When we at Classic Floor Covering count our blessings at Christmas time, we think of friends like you. Christmas greetings and a happy new year from Classic Floor Coverings. Dr. Joe Buffiel at Buffiel Family Chiropractic would like to wish you peace and joy at Christmas time and throughout the coming year. Happy holidays from Buffiel Family Chiropractic. Bobby FX Detailing, Hazleton's most talked about auto and truck detail shop, is now offering holiday gift certificates available in any denomination. It's the best gift for those hard to please family and friends. All major credit cards accepted, 25 years of detailing experience using all of the best products. If you have a problem getting there, call Bob and he will deliver to your door. We offer pickup and delivery of all vehicles. YevX Detailing, 11th and North Church Streets in Hazleton between Laurel and Church. Give them a call 570-0959 and remember, a clean car has class. Here's to good family, good friends, good times, good health, good cheer, and happy holidays throughout the year. Happy holidays from your friends at Beltway Diner. When South Laurel Street's newest business, a and Auto Sales of PA, count its blessing at Christmas time, they think of friends like you. Christmas greetings and happy new year from a and Auto Sales of PA. 
Luzerne County took the plunge off the fiscal cliff last night. After several drafts and redrafts, council approved their $260 million budget on a 7-4 vote. County budget workers say the spending plan is balanced and honest, and they hope to see some revenue coming in by the end of the year. The tax rate will remain the same, and if things go as planned, budget workers say the county could be out of debt in about 15 years. Again, I just think we have a good, solid, healthy, honest budget and uh, one that uh, the administration can live with and one that we hope is, go is going to produce a, a surplus by the end of the year. Now, some taxpayers say they still don't trust the positive changes will be made in the community so quickly. Councilmember Rick Morelli has been quoted recently saying the county not out of hot water yet. Well, some folks might call this year's budget plans a real cliffhanger. Coming in at number nine, the budget battle across the region. The 2012 budget year is almost here, and as Christina Papa tells us, finding a solution and making a final draft is easier said than done. They were calling it tax Taxmageddon, and the end is near for this year's budget bug, which was at the top of every city council agenda for the past several months. With the budget. Budget meeting. A budget crisis. Final budget. Been reviewing the budget. Oh, we had, a, we had a meeting on the budget. The budget is a mess. It's a nightmare. This pesty bug is on its way out. For Hazleton, Pottsville, and Luzerne County, city councils will soon be able to breathe a sigh of relief because budgets are due in the next few weeks. The journey to make that final draft has been long and draining for city workers and council members. They thought it was a joke. They thought work sessions were a joke. Now we've come to this point and it's, oh, oh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. You come up with a solution for us because the sky is falling. And at some points, people lost their tempers. And the next thing you know, he was screaming and I'm not going to take it. So I screamed and I thought to myself, what am I doing here? Hazelton has held open work sessions where council members sat down with the mayor to talk over ideas and try to find the best solutions for the entire community. Folks say some of the meetings in Hazelton were like a visit to the circus. There should have been big top music playing, um, the red and white streamers, the guy on a unicycle. Uh, this was hilarious. Meetings in Pottsville were a much different story and at times seemed to move in a much more positive direction. Last minute, you know, there's layoffs or there's things that's going to happen. It's, well, let's, I think everybody sees the seriousness of it now and we're all coming with some fresh ideas um, and, and, and looking deep into ways that we can bring some revenue in or make some additional cuts. As for Luzerne County, a little confusion led council members to redraft their budget over and over. Uh, we got a message from the manager on 20 October, and it was only a partial budget. Uh, later on, a few weeks later, we got the full budget. The public has not seen the final budget. There's been one revision, there's been two revisions, we're waiting for the final revision. One thing is for sure, all councils have one plan in mind, keeping their towns out of debt and keeping their department workers on the payroll. It's not just the council working to find the solutions. Folks have packed Hazleton City Hall more than just once to use their First Amendment rights and make sure their voice is heard. If the budgets are fixed as planned, councils hope to eventually make more revenue than they're using, all to help future families without the burden of city debt. Now this fiscal cliffhanger of 2012 is almost over, but the outcomes of the budgets will linger on for the upcoming year of 2013. Christina Papa, News 13. Here's a financial option. Let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck if you played. The daily number 079, Big 4, 2149, Quinto, 40192, Treasure Hunt, 4, 13, 19, 22, 27. Hope you were a winner. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news for tonight. Happy 17th birthday to Courtney Brill. Love from Dad, Nan, and Sonny. And happy holidays to these little ones. James is five in kindergarten at Holy Family Academy, and Jaylene is nine and in fourth grade at HFA. Remember, send us your holiday photos today. We'll be sure to get them on the air. That's tonight's social news. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Dana F. Simmons of Hazleton, 
funeral services will be held Thursday at 10.30 a.m. from the Boyle Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 8 p.m. and Thursday from 9 a.m. until the time of service. Jamie Robert Menzola of Hazel Township. Funeral is Thursday at 10 a.m. from the Butler Chapel of the Cropton Hughes Funeral Home. Friends may call Wednesday from 6 to 9 p.m. Rita Clark of Latimer. Funeral is Wednesday at 11 a.m. at the Belts Petrilli Funeral Home. Friends may call Tuesday from 7 to 9 p.m. and Wednesday from 10 a.m. until the time of service. Josephine A. Brown of Weatherly. Private arrangements are by the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. And finally, Clara Salazar, formerly of Drifton. Arrangements will be announced by the McHugh Wilcheck Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smilax Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. For delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. Carmen's Bakery and Deli, where everything is baked fresh daily on the premises. Christmas favorites, our very own popular nut roll, poppy roll, and pumpkin roll. Italian pastries, carrot cakes, gourmet pies, silk cakes dipped in garnish, Christmas logs, tiramisu, rum cake, chocolate cheesecake, biscottis, cannolis, Italian wedding cake, and our fresh baked rolls, plus our favorite designer cheesecake. Carmen's 37 East Broad Street, Hazleton. Your family's good health begins with a great team. That team is the Alliance Medical Group. We're the first health care provider in the greater Hazleton area to offer a fully integrated approach to family and specialized medical care. Our expanding network of more than 30 physicians and specialists are trusted by thousands for routine and complex medical treatments. For a convenient appointment at any of our 15 regional offices, simply call 501-4-AMG. Alliance Medical Group, your health, that's our specialty. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, Hazleton area Cougar basketball team came home, took on Whitehall, and they made easy work of the Zephyrs. So was it the home court advantage or what's the deal? We'd find out last night, Cougars back on the road, this time going up to the Poconos. And despite the Cougars having a one-point lead at halftime and looking like, well, they were right there in the game, it was Pocono Mountain West that came out and dominated the second half of action, and they pulled away from the Cougars. 74-61 the final. Now, Sal Biazzi, 32 points. That's obviously very impressive, particularly when you realize that's more than half of all of the Cougar offensive scoring. But... Uh, 74 points given up is something that Mike Joseph, I know, can't be happy with. So the Cougars dropped to 1-3 and three in the early going. They will be home against GAR, and that will be on Saturday night down at the McGeehan Gymnasium. Now, other boys basketball, Marion and Shenandoah Valley, they were in a little bit of a Donnybrook, and as you can see, Shenandoah Valley sneaks out the win. Meanwhile, Another close one between North Schuylkill and Tamaqua, and this one goes to the Blue Raiders as Brett Kosholik leads the way with 14 points. Girls basketball, MMI gets a win as Maria Corrado leads the way with 14. They beat Lincoln Leadership Academy. Let's go to swimming. Yesterday, down at the Nautatorium, boy, I'll tell you, I watched uh, Haley Kendall. She is something else. She got the win in the 50 freestyle. Do you realize this is a girl that uh, water polo, swimming, and then softball. Never gets a break from the middle of August right through graduation. That's what you call a uh, dominant athlete. Meanwhile, on the boys' side of things, Troy Velkuski, well, uh, he got it done as well. 200, 100 freestyle. They got wins also from uh, a whole bunch of other Cougars, and they route Scranton Prep, as you see right there, so a double win for the Cougars and the Lady Cougars. Today's schedule, girls basketball, Marion hosting Shenandoah Valley, and North Schuylkill will uh, entertain Tamaqua. In wrestling, it'll be Pottsville at Tamaqua, and right here in Hazleton, the Crestwood Comets, Hazleton area, with match number one of the Wyoming Valley Conference Division I 2012-13 season. Hey, how about Selena Garzio? You all know about Kayla Garzio, her big sister who uh, had a stellar career as a Lady Cougar. Well, Selena Garzio, well on her way. Yesterday, she was the only Lady Cougar that was announced as a Class Quad A first team all-star in the Wyoming Valley Conference. So our congratulations go out to Selena Garzio. 
Well, you know, over the weekend, we told you Joe Madden had his uh, Hazleton integration project, and one of the guys here representing the Tampa Bay Rays was Carlos Pena. Little did we know at the time, but there was a deal in the works, and yesterday it was announced that Carlos Pena has agreed to a one-year contract with the Houston Astros. So he's going to be moving from the Rays. Now, uh, doesn't that seem a little weird? Here's a guy that knew he was going out the door at Tampa, came in here for a man's thing. Not at all. That's the type of individual Carlos Pena is. And when we talk to him, it's very obvious that uh, he really admires Joe Madden. And whether he's going to play for him or not, this is a special man to Carlos Pena. In, in that case, he's a magician. You know, um, It's a very difficult thing to do. Obviously, we have different uh, cultures uh, uh, coming in, uh, people from different backgrounds. And um, to make them all work in synergy, it's not an easy uh, task. But Joe seems to... To bring the best out of everyone, um, regardless of where we come from. And we should point out, the Houston Astros, in case you don't know this, they're going to be playing in the American League. They're switching after 50 years of being in the NL over to the American League, where they'll balance out the Western Division. Hey, you know, you uh, might want to start thinking about heating your home this winter. You could do it for less with American Premium Coal Sales. They offer locally mined quality anthracite at a very, very fair price. It's available for pickup or delivery. And you know, if you order six tons or more, you'll qualify for a $10 per ton discount. Now, want more information? You got to contact American Premium Coal Sales. There's the number. It's even toll free if you're outside of the area. They're there Monday through Friday, 7 to 4. There's their Saturday hours. Boy, can you beat good old fashioned anthracite coal to heat your home. Well, here's a great story. Students at West Hazleton Elementary School came to class in their PJs today. Then they handed in a very special ticket and boarded the Polar Express. State Representative Tara Tuhill had the privilege of reading to the kiddos dressed in their warm and comfy jammies. The story of the Polar Express took them on a journey to the North Pole where they met Santa Claus. Teachers dressed in their nighttime outfits as well, and they say the kids love Polar Express Day. They like it. They know that it's coming every year. It's an annual tradition so far. This is about maybe our seventh or eighth year of doing it. And the children just know it's coming, the activities they do, and they're making the trains, the lessons. They just have a good time with it. And later on, children got to see Polar Express on the big screen. And not only did children in grades kindergarten through second grade get to enjoy the Polar Express through film and print, but their lessons have recently incorporated the Polar Express theme. And thanks to Jasmine Brooks right here, I have my very own Polar Express ticket. I'll plan on boarding it in just a little bit. No Polar Express headed in our general direction for the time being, though. Let's take a look at our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking radar, there's a lot of heavy rain up there to the north. It's going to be moving, eventually catching up with us, but none of that is going to really be snow. Tonight's creative condition, though, comes from Melanie Rodriguez, a student at West Hazleton Elementary Middle School, and she drew something nice, a sunny summer day, complete with the smiling sun. And there's Melanie. She's in the backyard. She's curling up there are tiny little hot dogs and hamburgers on that grill. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton. Tonight, a chance of showers, mainly before 7 o'clock. Mostly cloudy tonight with a low around 30. Then on Wednesday, mostly sunny with a high about 42, low tomorrow night 31. On to Schuylkill County, tonight cloudy, low around 33. Wednesday sunny with a high near 45 and a low around 30 degrees. Well, plenty more news and info headed your way on News 13. A second homicide in the greater Hazleton area. Police not saying much, but we'll have the latest on the body discovered in a Diamond Avenue apartment. That story and much more when the 13 crew comes right back. Here's to good friends, good times, good health, good cheer, and happy holidays throughout the year. Happy holidays from your friends at Ross's Cafe. George J. Hayden would like to wish you peace and joy at Christmas time and throughout the coming year. Happy holidays from your friends at Hayden Electric. Feisner Ford in Freeland has the best deals. New at Feisner Ford, the Hunter High Capacity, open and closed front alignment rack, and the Road Force Tire Balancer. You'll only get them here. We can align rollbacks, ambulances, vans, and construction vehicles. And we also offer free alignment checks with any vehicle service appointment. Feisner Ford is where you'll find the best deals on new and used vehicles. 
the best deals. Hi, I'm attorney Frank Skokoski. And I'm attorney Charles DeCosmo. The law offices of Skokoski and DeCosmo would like to wish you a safe and happy holiday season and a blessed year. When is the best time to buy? It's now. The year-end vehicle eradication. Now through January 5th at Berger Family Dealerships. Route 93, Hazleton. Mill, 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 millions. millions in unsold vehicle inventory to be disposed of. All at special year-end sale pricing. No price leaders. No gimmicks. No vehicle excluded. If you have been waiting for the best time of the year to buy, it's now. Absolutely end Saturday, January 5th at Berger Cadillac Buick GMC in Hazleton. You're invited to experience authentic homemade Italian food at Cafe Europa in the Laurel Mall. Delicious brick oven pizza, smooth, cool Italian gelato, fresh, crisp salads, hot and cold gourmet coffees, and daily and weekly specials for dine-in or takeout. Open seven days a week. Their friendly staff is ready to deliver the taste of Italy you've been searching for. Cafe Europa in the Laurel Mall, 570-454-1569 and online at cafeeuropa.tv. We build tires, but not tires like anybody else. We build Cooper tires for people, not just cars. People who are chauffeurs and shuttle pilots, heavy haulers and heavy hitters. More than what your Cooper tires can do, it's about what you can do with your Cooper tires. Life's a road trip. Come on, let's go. On behalf of the Greater Hazleton Chamber of Commerce, our staff, and our Board of Directors, we would like to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Happy, Happy holidays. holidays! At Slusser Law, we know accidents don't always happen between 9 and 5. That's why our lawyers are available around the clock to give you advice if someone you love has been injured or killed in an accident. It's important to protect your rights. I'm attorney Chris Slusser. Call us. We'll be there. Investigators say they found a body in the Hazleton apartment of a woman who was reporting missing over the weekend. No further info right now. That's our top story on News 13 at 4.30. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Good evening and thank you for staying with us. I'm Kathy Bazinski. Well, a short time ago, coroners removed the body from a building on East Diamond Avenue, and investigators are calling that person's death a homicide. While they won't identify the victim, Jasmine Brooks reports it was clear that friends and loved ones there at the time feared the worst. Oh, my God. It was a tragic scene outside of this East Diamond Avenue apartment building. A body taken from the building just hours ago after police executed a search warrant for the apartment. Police are calling it a homicide. This is the same building where a woman who has been missing for the past four days lives. But police are being cautious in releasing the victim's name. I just uh, because of where this investigation is headed, we're being very cautious with the specifics that we release. Maria Bria of 343 East Diamond Avenue was reported missing by her family on Saturday after she failed to pick up her children at school Friday. On Monday, Hazleton police issued an alert for the woman. This morning, city police, state police forensics investigators and a deputy coroner converged on the Diamond Street apartment building. Bria lived on the second floor with her ex-boyfriend, Oscar Lozano Garcia. Police say the pair recently broke up. An autopsy is scheduled for this afternoon at Wilkes-Barre General Hospital. Jasmine Brooks, News 13, Hazleton. And police say once the autopsy is complete, they will notify the victim's family and release the ID. Well, investigators now calling the deaths of 41-year-old Stacy Walton and 51-year-old John Walton, a suspected murder-suicide. Luzerne County Coroner says the couple died in their home on Butler Drive, each with a single gunshot wound. The coroner also saying their bodies were discovered by their son and Stacy's father, who went looking for them after they noticed the couple apparently never left for work Monday morning. 
Investigators said the couple had been in the homes together since Sunday afternoon. Friends say that John Walton had filed for a divorce about a week and a half ago. Stacy Walton was an elementary and middle school English as a second language teacher in the Hazelton Area School District. She worked at the Freeland, Drums, Arthur Street and Valley Schools. John Walton was a local paving contractor. The death investigation has been labeled a murder-suicide. The coroner won't rule on who the victim was until forensics tests are completed. Well, today, students and faculty throughout the Hazelton Area School District continue to grieve the loss of Stacy Walton, a friend, teacher, and co-worker to many. Those who knew her and worked with her are calling Stacy a caring and giving person. Superintendent of Hazelton Area Dr. Francis Antonelli says grief counseling continues today. Well, again, we're uh, deeply uh, saddened and, and really devastated by by the recent events uh, in, in involving a, a, a teacher that was very much loved and very well respected by all who knew her in the Hazelton Area School District. Uh, uh, many folks are having a hard time coping with this and we have and continue to have on-site grief counselors not only for staff but for students. Uh, her students absolutely loved her. Antonelli says grief counselors are available at many schools throughout the district and students as well as teachers taking advantage of their services. School officials in Connecticut are calling it a day to start healing. With heavy hearts and amid high security, children in Newtown returned to school today for the first time since a gunman killed 26 students and staff at Sandy Hook Elementary on Friday. Even as schools were reopening, two more children, six years old, Jessica Ricos and James Mattioli, were being laid to rest. Wakes were also scheduled tonight for Charlotte Bacon and Daniel Barden, and for teacher Victoria Soto, hailed as a hero for shielding her students in a closet. Meanwhile, the elementary school where they were killed remains a crime scene. District officials have not decided whether it will reopen. Its 600 students will now attend class at a school in a neighboring community. Well, the tragic Newtown school shooting is affecting safety control all over the country. Luzerne County Community College has decided to increase its, its campus safety. Christina Papa with more on what the college is doing. They're locked and loaded. Luzerne County Community College's security officers will officially be carrying guns on patrol starting in the new year. We have enhanced the training for our, our security officers. And we are moving towards a policy of adopting uh, our officers to carry weapons. President Tom Leary says this idea isn't something new. The security office has been pushing for the changes for over a year. Leary says recent mass shootings have opened the school's eyes to the importance of campus safety. Uh, with everything that's going on in our, in our society, unfortunately, the, the terrible tragedy and sadness we experienced over the weekend, it makes us more sensitive and cognizant to our responsibility to protect. LCCC is the largest college in northeastern Pennsylvania, and with over 7,000 students, the security team says it's important to keep a watchful eye on all 180 acres of the campus. Now, Mr. Barrett says they have cameras and security officers at each of the campus's sites. He says they do their best to try and keep the entire college community safe. Well, we have a very safe campus. I would like to emphasize that. Uh, we have very few incidents that do occur here at the college, and we attribute that to the uh, safety conscious staff and students that we do have here. Leary says he's pleased with the training and safety changes that are put in place to better protect the students on campus. Students are in any way put in harm's way, and we will have trained professionals who can respond to that situation. Christina Papa, News 13, Nanticoke. A couple from Hazel Township has been charged with growing with intent to deliver marijuana. And it all happened when police were called to their home during a domestic dispute. 47-year-old Mary Cook and 54-year-old Anthony Gentle are both charged with charges related to growing pot and with intent to deliver it. When troopers arrived at their apartment, Cook's daughter told them about the pot growing in an upstairs bedroom and even brought them two of the plants. Troopers went to the bedroom and found a closet transformed into a grow room. Both Cook and Gentle were arraigned and released on 30 $35,000 bail. Cook also had a PFA against Gentle, and he was charged with violating it. And just ahead on News 13, has the Luzerne County budget battle finally ended, or are there still budget bumps to come? 
And this has been a year of fiscal cliffhangers all across our region. That's why budget crises are number nine on our list of top stories of 2012. It's coming up on News 13. Christmas is one week away, so you have seven more days to shop. Buy $100 in gift cards, good for the gold, bar, and restaurant, and receive $20 free, good for the restaurant and bar. When is the best time to buy? It's now. The year-end vehicle eradication. Now through January 5th at Burger Family Dealerships. Route 93, Hazleton. Mill 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 millions in unsold vehicle inventory to be disposed of. All at special year-end sale pricing. No price leaders. No gimmicks. No vehicle excluded. If you have been waiting for the best time of the year to buy, it's now. Absolutely end Saturday, January 5th at Burger Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram in Hazleton. When it comes to all of your grocery needs, shop Boyer's Food Markets at two locations, 15th Street in Hazleton and South Hancock Street in McAdoo. Here are this week's specials. Every weekend, look in our hot food area for wings, tenders, and other party favorites. Don't forget about our gift cards and our senior citizens discounts. We also have double coupons every day. You can also go to boyersfood.com for our weekly circular, monthly super specials, and much more. It's all at Boyer's Food Markets in Hazleton and McAdoo. May the love, hope, and peace of this holiday season abide with you now and throughout the coming year. Happy Holidays from the Manor and Pavilion at St. Luke's Village. May Jesus' birth bring you the music of a child's laugh, the warmth of friendship, and the spirit of love. Happy Holidays from Fruity Smoothies located in the Laurel Mall. Managing risk is more than just buying an insurance policy. At Dreyfus, our approach is different. We have 25 risk management professionals who have the tools and experience to help our clients avoid and survive unexpected events. We can help you with risk transfer, OSHA requirements, safe workplace, cybersecurity, and claims management. All of these go well beyond an insurance policy. We're also independent, so we can access dozens of insurance carriers like Grange Insurance, who can insure your auto, home, business, and life. Dreyfus Insurance since 1901 and Grange Insurance since 1935. We're committed to helping you manage risk. She dreams of golden diamonds, though you may never be told. But together you can find them in a glint of gold. Rocco Simfloni here from the Glint of Gold Jewelry Store. Make your holiday shopping experience easy this year. Just say jewelry. The sparkle shining in her eyes starts with a glint of gold. Remember, shop everywhere else, but shop here last at Glint of Gold. The Field Family Chiropractic is donating all initial new patient services, and in return, they are asking you to donate a new, unwrapped toy or a $25 donation for underprivileged children. All toys and money will be donated to Silent Santa. Help Dr. Joe Bafil make this a special year for children in need. Together, we can make a difference. That's Bafil Family Chiropractic, Route 93 in Sugarloaf, 570 788 3737. Tonight's weather is brought to you by Sand Springs Country Club. Here is one of their weekly restaurant specials. All specials served with soup or salad. And tonight's feature dish is steak marsala for just $11.95. A savory sirloin tip sautéed perfectly with fresh herbs, completed with the aromatic marsala wine and brown sauce. Located at 10 Clubhouse Drive in Drums, PA, call us at 570-788-5845. Visit us at sandspringsgolf.com or you can find us on Facebook. Luzerne County took the plunge off the fiscal cliff last night. After several drafts and redrafts, council approved their $260 million budget on a 7-4 vote. County budget workers say the spending plan is balanced and honest, and they hope to see some revenue coming in by the end of the year. The tax rate will remain the same, and if things go as planned, budget workers say the county could be out of debt in about 15 years. Again, I just think we have a good, solid, healthy, honest budget and uh, one that uh, the administration can live with and one that we hope is, go is going to produce a, a surplus by the end of the year. Taxpayers say they still don't believe that positive changes will be made in the community so quickly. Meanwhile, Council Member Rick Morelli has been quoted recently saying the county is not out of the water just yet. Time now to continue our top 10 stories of 2012. Some folks might call this year's budget battling a real cliffhanger. Coming in at number nine on the list, the budget bug. The budget of 2013 is almost here, and as Christina Papa tells us, finding a solution and making a final draft, easier said than done. 
They were calling it Taxmageddon, and the end is near for this year's budget bug, which was at the top of every city council agenda for the past several months. With the budget. Budget meeting. A budget crisis. Final budget. Been reviewing the budget. Oh, we had a, we had a meeting on the budget. The budget is a mess. It's a nightmare. This pesty bug is on its way out. For Hazleton, Pottsville, and Luzerne County, city councils will soon be able to breathe a sigh of relief because budgets are due in the next few weeks. The journey to make that final draft has been long and draining for city workers and council members. They thought it was a joke. They thought work sessions were a joke. Now we've come to this point and it's, oh, oh, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. You come up with a solution for us because the sky is falling. And at some points, people lost their tempers. And the next thing you know, he was screaming and I'm not going to take it, so I screamed. And I thought to myself, what am I doing here? Hazleton has held open work sessions where council members sat down with the mayor to talk over ideas and try to find the best solutions for the entire community. Folks say some of the meetings in Hazleton were like a visit to the circus. There should have been big top music playing, um, the red and white streamers, the guy on a unicycle. Uh, this was hilarious. Meetings in Pottsville were a much different story and at times seemed to move in a much more positive direction. Last minute, you know, there's layoffs or there's things that's going to happen. It's, well, let's, I think everybody sees the seriousness of it now and we're all coming with some fresh ideas um, and, and, and looking deep into ways that we can bring some revenue in or make some additional cuts. As for Luzerne County, a little confusion led council members to redraft their budget over and over. Uh, we got a message from the manager on 20 October, and it was only a partial budget. Uh, later on, a few weeks later, we got the full budget. The public has not seen the final budget. There's been one revision, there's been two revisions, we're waiting for the final revision. One thing is for sure, all councils have one plan in mind, keeping their towns out of debt and keeping their department workers on the payroll. It's not just the council working to find the solutions. Folks have packed Hazleton City Hall more than just once to use their First Amendment rights and make sure their voice is heard. If the budgets are fixed as planned, councils hope to eventually make more revenue than they're using, all to help future families without the burden of city debt. Now this fiscal cliffhanger of 2012 is almost over, but the outcomes of the budgets will linger on for the upcoming year of 2013. Christina Papa, News 13. And time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar, a lot of heavy rain and shower activity moving through New York State in our general direction. We're going to catch some of that a little bit later on, if not already. Tonight's creative condition comes from Melanie Rodriguez, a student at West Hazleton Elementary Medical School. And this is a great one. She drew a sunny summer day, complete with a smiling sun. And there's Melanie. She's in the backyard. She's grilling up some little tiny hot dogs and hamburgers on the grill. Now let's take a look at the News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton tonight. Mostly cloudy, a chance of showers, mainly before 7 o'clock tonight. Uh, then tonight, low around 30 degrees. On Wednesday, mostly sunny with a high around 42, low of 31. Thursday, chance of rain mainly after about 3 in the afternoon, high near 40. Then at night, rain and snow mixing to all snow after 2 a.m. One to two inches of snow possible, low about 28. Friday, a chance of snow showers with a high near 34, low down to 25. Saturday, mostly cloudy with a high near 32. Over to Schuylkill County. Tonight, cloudy with a low around 33. Wednesday, sunny with a high near 45, low around 30. Thursday, a chance of rain and snow before 1 o'clock. Then all rain, high near 42. At night, rain and snow mixed, likely accumulations, maybe up to 2 inches, low down to 31 degrees. Friday, cloudy with a high near 36, low around 26. And then Saturday, mostly cloudy with a high near 35 degrees. Still ahead on News 13, sports on the menu with Fred Barletta. He's talking a trade in baseball. Then later, all aboard for the Polar Express. We'll put on our jammies and go for a holiday ride. Just ahead on News 13. Attention pay-per-view subscribers. If you see your name right now on News 13, you'll have 13 minutes to call in and win a free movie from Service Electric Cablevision. Our winner tonight, Frank Gundy of Sugarloaf. Frank, if you're watching, give us a call right now, 570-459-9813 to win your free movie.
Wishing a wonderful holiday season and a happy new year to friends, family, and alumni from the Penn State Hazleton campus community. We are Penn State. At Grand Central, we not only have the area's largest selection of Sealy mattresses, we also carry Sealy's new Optimum Cool Gel Memory Foam Mattress, which makes our customers happy. Very, very happy. Grand Central, mattresses, furniture, and appliances, where your house becomes a home. Growing Years Child Care Center Preschool would like to wish you a Christmas filled with the gifts of wonder and beauty, peace and joy, and hope and love. Happy holidays from your friends at Growing Years Child Care Center Preschool. Hazleton's newest business, M&M's Delicious, wishes you peace and joy at Christmas time and throughout the coming year. Happy holidays from M&M's Delicious. May Jesus' birth bring you the music of a child's laugh, the warmth of friendship, and the spirit of love. Happy holidays from Frank J. Bonin Funeral Home Incorporated. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. The Lazy Canaria Cougar basketball team came home, took on Whitehall, and they made easy work of the Zephyrs. So was it the home court advantage or what's the deal? We'd find out last night, Cougars back on the road, this time going up to the Poconos. And despite the Cougars having a one-point lead at halftime and looking like, well, they were right there in the game, it was Pocono Mountain West that came out and dominated the second half of action, and they pulled away from the Cougars. 74-61 the final. Now, Sal Biazzi, 32 points. That's obviously very impressive, particularly when you realize that's more than half of all of the Cougar offensive scoring. But uh, 74 points given up is something that Mike Joseph, I know, can't be happy with. So the Cougars dropped to one and three in the early going. They will be home against GAR. And that'll be on Saturday night down at the Begin Gymnasium. Now other boys basketball, Marion and Shenandoah Valley. They were in a little bit of a Donnybrook. And as you can see, Shenandoah Valley sneaks out the win. Meanwhile, another close one between North Schuylkill and Tamaqua. And this one goes to the Blue Raiders as Brett Kasholik leads the way with 14 points. Girls basketball, MMI gets a win as Maria Corrado leads the way with 14. They beat Lincoln Leadership Academy. Let's go to swimming. Yesterday, down at the Nauditorium, boy, I'll tell you, I watched uh, Haley Kendall. She is something else. She got the win in the 50 freestyle. Do you realize this is a girl that uh, water polo, swimming, and then softball. Never gets a break from the middle of August right through graduation. That's what you call a uh, dominant athlete. Meanwhile, on the boys' side, I think, Troy Velkuski, well, uh, he got it done as well. 200, 100 freestyle. They got wins also from uh, a whole bunch of other Cougars, and they route Scranton Prep, as you see right there. So a double win for the Cougars and the Lady Cougars. Today's schedule, girls basketball. Marion hosting Shenandoah Valley and North Schuylkill will uh, entertain Tamaqua. In wrestling, it'll be Pottsville at Tamaqua and right here in Hazleton. The Crestwood Comets, Hazleton area, with match number one of the Wyoming Valley Conference Division I 2012-13 season. Hey, how about Selena Garzio? You all know about Kayla Garzio, her big sister who uh, had a stellar career as a Lady Cougar. Well, Selena Garzio, well on her way. Yesterday, she was the only Lady Cougar that was announced as a Class Quad A first team all-star in the Wyoming Valley Conference. So our congratulations go out to Selena Garzio. Well, you know, over the weekend, we told you Joe Madden had his uh, Hazleton integration project, and one of the guys here representing the Tampa Bay Rays was Carlos Pena. Little did we know at the time, but there was a deal in the works, and yesterday it was announced that Carlos Pena has agreed to a one-year contract with the Houston Astros. So he's going to be moving from the Rays. Now, uh, doesn't that seem a little weird? Here's a guy that knew he was going out the door at Tampa, came in here for a man's thing. Not at all. That's the type of individual Carlos Pena is. And when we talk to him, it's very obvious that uh, he really admires Joe Madden. And whether he's going to play for him or not, this is a special man to Carlos Pena. In, in that case, he's a magician. You know, um, 
it's a very difficult thing to do. Obviously, we have different uh, cultures uh, uh, coming in, uh, people from different backgrounds, and um, uh, to make them all work in synergy, it's not an easy uh, task. But Joe seems to to bring the best out of everyone, um, regardless of where we come from. And we should point out the Houston Astros, in case you don't know this, they're going to be playing in the American League. They're switching after 50 years of being in the NL over to the American League where they'll balance out the Western Division. Hey, how hungry are you tonight? The most popular wing night in town is up at Bottlenecks. That's right, they've got the area's best wings and every Tuesday, they're just $9.95 for all you can eat. All of the delicious flavors. You can have as many as you like. You can't go wrong, and they are delicious. Up at Bottlenecks every Tuesday. They sponsor us not only on Tuesdays, but it's a great place. Everyone knows that Bottlenecks is the home of award-winning wings and mouth-watering steaks, but now a new tasty reason to stop by. Brand new fire-grilled ribs. A half rack of meaty, fall off the bone St. Louis style spare ribs, fire grilled to perfection. And the best night to give them a try is Thursday for Rack em Up Rib Night, featuring the delicious ribs served with bottomless fries for only $9.95. Bottlenecks is open seven days a week. The kitchen is open till midnight every day. There's always a reason to stop by Bottlenecks. Here's to good friends, good times, good health, good cheer, and happy holidays throughout the year. Happy holidays from your friends at Harry's You Pull It. Dr. R.J. Makuda, General Podiatry, wishes you peace and joy at Christmas time and throughout the coming year. Happy holidays from Dr. R.J. Makuda. Don't miss the girls. We're going to take you on a spectacular train ride. That's right. It's the biggest train ride you'll ever see here in Greater Hazleton. It's right here. And where is Jasmine? Jasmine, are you there? Hey girls, I'm here at Holy Family Academy with my friend Bella, and she has a very important message for you. Rudolph's nose better not burn out or there won't be a Christmas. Oh, pretty scary, but we have so much more Christmas trivia on this episode of The Girls. I'm Sam Lasant, CEO of SAMHSA Productions and News 13. And I'm Scott Linen, publisher of The Standard Speaker. On behalf of the Lasant family and all of us here at SSPTV Local News 13. And from the Linen and Haggerty families along with the staff of The Standard Speaker, we want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas. And a very healthy and prosperous New Year. I want to thank all of you for watching our local programming and supporting our News Alliance. I would also like to thank all of our faithful readers for your support throughout the year. We are looking forward for the New Year to continue to provide you with local news and information. Thank you. And have a safe and happy holiday season. Hospice of the Sacred Heart is a nonprofit agency now serving nine counties in Northeastern PA. We help many elderly patients in their home, providing assistance to them and their families. My older sister, Kathy, was diagnosed with cancer. She was very, very sick. And hospice came and uh, took wonderful care of her. My husband was very ill and they taught me how to do everything. I just couldn't have done it without them. Call 706-2400 for more information or visit our website at hospicesacredheart.org. and Jimmy's. We are two! Finally tonight, students at West Hazleton Elementary School came to class in their PJs today. Then they handed in a very special ticket and boarded the Polar Express. And State Representative Tara Tuhill had the privilege of reading to the kids dressed in their warm and comfortable jammies. The story of the Polar Express took them on a journey to the North Pole where they met Santa Claus. Teachers also dressed in their yes, nighttime yeah, garb and say the kids love Polar Express Day. They like it. They know that it's coming every year. It's an annual tradition so far. This is about maybe our seventh or eighth year of doing it. And the children just know it's coming. The activities they do, they're making the trains, the lessons. They just have a good time with it. And later on, the kids got to see Polar Express on the big screen. Not only did children in grades kindergarten through second get to enjoy the Polar Express through film and print, but their lessons have recently incorporated the Polar Express theme.
I even got a little souvenir, my very own Polar Express ticket. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. You can catch this newscast again with rebroadcast through tonight or just go to News 13's website any old time, ssptv.com. You'll always find the local and regional news you need and the community news you want. For the entire 13 team, thank you for joining us. I'm Kathy Bozinski. Have a great night.